would like to introduce our speaker, John Curran. He is president and CEO of Aaron. And today he will be giving an Aaron Internet Routing Registry and our PKA update. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'm John Curran, president and CEO of the American Registry for Internet Numbers, uh, Aaron. I'm here, I'm gonna talk about what Aaron is doing uh, on its Internet Routing Registry project, our IRR, and what we're doing with our PKI as well. Um, let me try to um, give you a quick update on what we've been doing and uh, how it affects you. It's some pretty important changes. So uh, Aaron has been in the middle of doing a major upgrade to our infrastructure. We did Aaron online uh, in uh, 2019, and we started our IRR, new internet routing project, uh, at about the same time. We had done a requirements document with the community talking about whether you even wanted a new Aaron Internet Routing Registry, and the consensus was that you did. So we uh, did a requirements document, identified key stakeholders, and uh, have been doing the design. We're now past design, we're into deployment and QA, and our initial deployment for our new Internet Routing Registry uh, that's integrated with Aaron Online will be June 10th. Uh, so it's just coming up next month. Um, initially, there's going to be two ways to create objects in Aaron's Internet Routing Registry. Using the existing email template processor to create uh, objects, just as people have been doing. But we'll pick up the new way of using Aaron Online, a web-based interface, to create Internet Routing objects. Now, in the process of updating Aaron's um, IRR, we had to do quite a bit of work. First, the back end is, uh, was quite a historic routing engine, or a routing registry engine. Uh, we've updated to a new platform. Uh, we're using uh, IRD4. Uh, and then we had to come up with processes for migration of data, and then uh, how to distinguish validated data and to keep track of that within Aaron, because uh, we have a lot of data, as people know, in the existing Aaron IRR. And there was a call from the community to be very careful and clearly distinguish the data that was being created by people we knew uh, and people we could validate versus data that was just being carried over. So we created an architecture for that, and we'll talk more about how that gets published, but there's actually two data sets involved here. And then, of course, a front-end interface to allow people to go into Aaron Online and create new records uh, for uh, Internet Routing Registry objects. Um, so what's going to happen is that all of the existing objects in the Aaron IRR get migrated into the new Internet Routing Engine, uh, Internet Routing Registry daemon. All of them get migrated, and they end up in two data sets. Uh, one of them is Aaron, uh, which will be everything that's validated is meeting our requirements. So we know who it is, and it, the resource is associated with a normal organization. Uh, and it's, it's got Aaron services associated with it. Uh, that will end up being published in the Aaron data set. And then for uh, everything else that's in the IRR, those get moved in uh, to the new IRR and get published in the Aaron no-auth uh, unvalidated object set. So uh, fairly simple approach. You've seen it before, if you're familiar with other routing registries and other IRRs. And uh, we hope this makes it clear. Going forward, we expect to see more and more valid objects in the Aaron data set. And over time, the Aaron no auth set will become, uh, non auth will become less important. Um, people will still be using the old email processor. And that includes people who uh, aren't known to Aaron or validated, people who had an email address and managed to use Aaron's old IRR service. Each day, we will migrate uh, newly created objects or updated objects into the new database. If it lines up with a, um, a valid user ID, a valid org ID uh, that's associated with uh, uh, the addresses in Aaron, then as long as we validate the organization and they're a current Aaron Online user, then it will end up in the Aaron data set. Uh, if we've never validated the user, we don't know anything more than what you know, their email address, uh, we don't know the organization or why they're representing an object. It may not be assigned to them. We may not even know what organization's involved. It ends up in the non-auth data set. Um, 
No new maintainers will be accepted into the IRR email system. To create an object, you need a maintainer object, um, and you folks who have them are fine, but we will be winding down over time the IRR email interface, and so no new maintainers will be accepted. Uh, if you want to create new objects, we ask you to validate, use Aaron online to do so. Um, the uh, objects, what objects are we going to support? We're not going to support the full RPSL. We're going to support a reasonable subset. So that's uh, Route route 6, um, Autonomous System Number, AS Set, Route Set. And uh, those are, uh, reflect 99% of the usage out there, so that shouldn't be a problem. When you create an object in Aaron Online, you only can maintain it and update it in our online. There's no access to that object. You can't switch between that and email templates. In fact, uh, if you're using the email templates, continue to use them. But once you go in and begin creating objects in Aaron online, we're going to disable your email template. So you only use Aaron online to create the objects. And the, the reason for that is because there's some interesting migration issues. We don't want to get into a situation of how to reconcile uh, objects that are updated uh, in email and objects that are updated in Aaron Online. So the email, we're happy to uh, provide a way to get that data into Aaron Online so you can uh, have that and have that published, uh, but we're not going to provide uh, ongoing back and forth. It's uh, intended to be a street that's one way. When you go into Aaron Online and you say, I want to start creating pro objects with the uh, Iron Online web interface, it will say, we're going to disable your maintainer ID, so you will not be maintaining things using the old email template system. OK. Um, so unauthenticated IR objects, you maintain them with the old email templates. Um, when you want to have authenticated IR objects, you can continue to use the old templates and not use Iron Online. Or you can start using Aaron Online, and then uh, that's what all the anyone new coming into the IRR will use, and you'll end up using uh, that. And all the, all the objects created via the Aaron Online web interface, are, of course, are authenticated because the party logging in using Aaron Online, we know who they are, we know what organization they're associated. We're publishing all the data, unauthenticated and authenticated IRR objects. We'll be publishing them via FTP, and we'll be publishing them via uh, NTRM. Um, so for near, for near real time monitoring, NTRM feeds, we're going to offer two streams, one for the validated IRR, one for the unvalidated. If you're relying on Aaron IRR data today, you're using that for your own route waiting, what route filtering, you need to start pulling both streams. You'll need to configure that after June 10th. The serial numbers get reset on the NRTM streams. So after June 10th, you'll need to update your processor and start pulling new streams, uh, both Aaron and Aaron non-auth. Uh, if you don't do that, you're not going to see new data unless you use the new serial number. Obviously, FTP. We'll have two FTP archives for that data. You'll be able to pull down both. You'll, if you're using FTP to pull IRR data, you'll need to update to pull both uh, Aaron non-auth and uh, Aaron sources. Future IRR functionality. Uh, so we've had requests to have an API to manage IRR records, and we will do that. We're in the process of specking that out uh, so that people who want the new IRR functionality, want to have some automation, uh, and, but don't want to end up using a mail-based uh, approach, we'll have a tool that lets them uh, switch to using the new IRR and still have some programmatic interface working on APIs for that purpose. We have a team looking at other IR enhancements, and we're going to continue to have them uh, do any other cleanup or any other functionality that people want uh, through this year and, and potentially a little bit beyond. Now, as much as we love the Internet Routing Registry uh, out there, um, there's a lot of big push to actually have something that has even tighter uh, attributes in terms of uh, useful information, and that is our PKI. And so, I want to spend a little bit of time. Our work on IRR is not designed to displace work on RPKI. It's, in fact, intended to be complementary. But we're also doing quite a bit of work, Aaron, on RPKI. We're in the middle of a big RPKI infrastructure upgrade. And to that end, 
Uh, we have done some changes already. Uh, we are now doing repository generation on a faster schedule every five minutes. So if you go in and create new objects on our hosted service, you'll see our repository update in a rapid time. We've added um, our RDP, uh, repos uh, RPKI Repository Delta Protocol, to allow uh, more timely uh, repository retrieval than what our sync was providing. Uh, we've uh, changed our ROA validity period. Uh, we had it set to many, many years. Uh, we're now using a more commonly used 825 days. We're going to, um, we've uh, updated our RPKI delegated support to have full support for RFC uh, 80, 20, 8083, a down protocol. And we spent a little bit of time testing that out uh, with uh, different implementations. There's now some very good implementations for delegated RPKI servers. You can run your own CA. Uh, and link into Aaron, uh, end up with your records validated that way, but at the same time have full control over what gets published. And um, we've added the capability to list and delete ROAs via our RESTful registration services. They have an API for that right now uh, using our RESTful web interfaces. Um, let's see what we're going to be doing. Uh, in the back end, we have some changes coming. We're going to be moving to a new HSM. Our, uh, prior HSM uh, was uh, getting long in the tooth, and so we're moving to a new HSM and uh, with a more streamlined interface between the HSM and the Aaron online application. We're going to be uh, removing some limitations. We've had limitations on the number of um, CRL uh, uh, certificate revocations lists, and those will uh, get cleaned up in this process. Uh, makes some other operational aspects like key signing ceremonies simpler. Uh, and that's coming uh, later this year. And uh, we'll also be adding uh, better tools to make it easier to use RPKI, some notification enhancements and uh, UI improvements. And then the last one was we're going to be tying these together to some extent. We're going to make it pretty easy to synchronize IRR and RPKI data uh, so that people who uh, want to provide the information so that people, no matter what they're using, whether they're using uh, route validation um, with RPKI or whether or not they're taking information through IRR, uh, will make it easier for our hosted customers to be able to uh, put their information and keep them in sync, both IRR and RPKI. Um, with that, it finishes my formal presentation. And uh, I guess I'll uh, now turn it back to questions. Hi, John. Hello. Hey, how are you? Thank you. Cool. Thank you for the update and thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Um, excellent. We have some questions for you. Um, I'm just going to read them as they came as they came in. Okay. Um, the first question is: Will RN validate against RPKI internally? So uh, right now, as I sort of up gave an idea, we're doing the new IRR and getting that in place. We're looking at how to do um, IRR, RPKI integration later this year. Right now, our definition of validation is, as I said in the slides, as long as the organization, is, as long as the uh, routing object is um, associated with a known organization that has services from Aaron, it'll be considered valid and in the off uh, data set or the Aaron uh, regular uh, stream. We're not doing any immediate validation against RPKI. So that is something in the future. We don't know if we'll validate or provide that as another opportunity to automatically feed uh, IRR objects from. We need to talk to the community about that. So initially, no. Long term, we do want to do an integration, but we want to talk to the community about how they want that done. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, are you moving to IRR D4? Um, yes, I think I might have mentioned that real quick at the beginning. Uh, so the new routing engine is uh, based on IRR D4. Uh, we'd like to thank Joe and Sasha and the, the whole team working on that. It's uh, a major step forward for Aaron and uh, just happy to have uh, access to such high quality open source software. Next question is, 
uh, I currently utilize the RADB for IRR. I am in the process of setting up RPKI with RIN. How painful would it be to decommission the RADB and move to the RIN IRR? Ah, okay. So um, the community had told us for many, many years, don't bother working on IRR. And that's actually what we did. We, we let it sort of languish out there. Um, and uh, about four years ago, people said, hey, your IRR has gotten so far behind, you need to update it. So we're offering a new IRR. And certainly, um, you could decide to use Aaron's new IRR if that's what you want to do. A um, couple of things to think about. Right now, we don't have a programmatic interface. So this is really useful for someone who wants to go on web interface, create a few route objects, that's suitable. If you're currently doing uh, template-based update, automatic updates with customers or similar, then you probably want to keep uh, either using the old Aaron template-based one or continue to use our ADB for a while until we can give you a, an API and, a, and an interface, an a, a programmatic interface. So um, if you're starting from scratch, well, that's a great question. Um, if you can maintain things manually, you might want to just create uh, IR objects with the uh, the new um, Aaron IRR coming out on June 10th. Um, if you need a programmatic interface, um, I don't want to delay your project. You probably want to use something else uh, and then look at Aaron after we have one. Thank you. Uh, the question is, uh, do you in still intend to allow other IRRs access to authentication of objects? Have you figured out how to do this? Well, okay, so we do NRTM uh, and FTP access to both data sets, uh, Aaron and uh, Aaron non-auth. So people can use either sets of data they want, but the only thing that's going to show up in the Aaron uh, data set going forward is uh, information we can actually validate, where we know the organization, we have a current relationship with them. There's a lot of information uh, in the old IRR that um, is impossible to validate. The organizations have gone away, the maintainers have gone away. So um, uh, we're not providing other IRRs access one way or the other. What we're doing is cre creating a clean data source uh, with the Aaron stream, which anyone can use uh, in any way they want. I guess I missed that question. You better re-ask it. Okay. Just to, just to make sure that I got it correctly as well. Do you st still intend to allow other IRs access to authentication of objects? Have you figured out how to do this? Okay. So next uh, next question: If I proxy register objects today for my customers, uh, what happens to these objects if I use the web interface? Can I continue um, to proxy register for my customers? Uh, the whole idea of proxy registration is kind of a, um, a oxymoron. Um, uh, I uh, we're moving to where we're going to have validated data, and um, that means that already, for example, uh, in Aaron, you cannot um, uh, do a, a redelegation to a customer without them creating their own objects. So, I'd recommend you not try to build a model based on proxy uh, uh, systems. Uh, if you are, you might want to use another set of tools. Thank you. The next one is an uh, RPKI question. Uh, why did you select a five minute repository update? Do you have any data on the periodicity of client polling intervals? Hmm. Don't have any data on that. It's an excellent question. Uh, I'm going to need to dig a little bit for that. Is that Mr. H That's probably Mr. Houston. Um, so let me, uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll dig that up and, and, and get back and look. The five minute, if there's a rational basis for it, I'll, I'll let you know. And if that's not, if you have a suggested one, send it to me. Excellent. Indeed, it was from uh, Mr. Houston. Okay, next question. On the flag day, Aaron will be reset and have the authenticated 
also known as web submitted objects. Is RN non auth starting with the current RN content or also from scratch? Excellent question. Actually, to be honest, um, this is the most complicated part of the migration. So, because the first two times I looked at this, I wasn't quite clear I understood it. Um, every day, we will take what's in the old IR database and move it into the new publication points, which are being done under IRD4. When we move it, everything that matches a um, an authenticated Aaron organization ends up in the Aaron stream, and everything that matches uh, that doesn't ends up otherwise in the Aaron non-auth. The sum of those two is the full set of information. So um, every day, whatever's been in the old template-based, email-based IRR is going to end up in Aaron non-auth being published. The set of that that's validated by Aaron, where we have a valid organization ID, ends up in the Aaron stream. So it's um, uh, the answer to the question. The short one is it's not from scratch. It's fully populated, minus those things that are authenticated, and those are only in the Aaron stream, not the Aaron non-off. And every day that updates. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, um, is there a day one bulk import function functionality in web-based IRR, or is that uh, pending the API? Yeah, no bulk load right now. Uh, we're going to have to figure out how to uh, create an API that makes sense for that. And um, there's no standard for this, folks. So uh, I am interested in ideas. If you have a suggestion, Aaron's suggestion process with the Aaron Consult mailing list, we would be happy to take your, your input as to what you need for API functionality, other than the obvious that you can do in templates right now. Um. Two more questions, so one before the last. Uh, what does the timeline for RN look like for some of those of those new RPKI enhancements? For example, the notification to tech and routing contacts for uh, automatic ROA renewals. It's a priority for this year to get done by the end of 2020. I don't hear screams in the background, so I think I got that right. Thank you. And the last question we have so far, and we still have seven minutes. Uh, is an LRSA required for uh, access to this new IRR service? Another excellent question. So um, the only things that end up in the Aaron stream is authenticated objects, and that means we actually know the organization. We have an agreement with them. There's a lot of old data. We don't actually know who put in or whether the party that put it in for the old objects, the old legacy blocks, for example, whether or not that party is still the one associated with it. So, yeah, if you want to have us say we know who you are and put you in the authenticated service, then, yes, you're going to have to uh, end up becoming a customer. And uh, uh, that's uh, been consistent with Aaron's approach. Uh, people who are legacy resource holders are published in the database, can update right now, can continue to do so for now. Not a problem with that. But if you want to benefit from all the new services, we got to validate who you are, and you've got to become a customer. Thank you very much, John. Um, we don't have any more questions, um, so I think we can uh, conclude our session. Thank you very much for the update. Thank you, Anna. And um, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.